Kyle's Pro Tips. Hey guys, thanks for voting. That was really fast. So like in one day we got over 100 votes. So we passed the 436 mark. So I'm going to be making a tutorial here for you guys. It's advanced character rigging in After Effects. So uh, let's actually take a look at uh, what we're going to be building here. Um, we're going to be using the puppet pins, but in a different way. We're going to make them more powerful. Let me see if I can uh, uh, show you. These are controlling multiple puppet pins at once. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to basically make the puppet pins parent to null objects. Because once they're null objects, uh, they can basically be parented to, you know, a controller like here's the pelvis. That's controlling three points. Um, so that's good for making things keep their shape. And just, you know, if, rather than moving three things, you're moving one thing. So uh, I find this technique really useful. So uh, let's get started. Here we have it's kind of a, a blank mummy uh, template. Um, drawn by me and uh, textured by Michelle. And uh, if you're wondering what this layer is, this I'm um, using as a uh, alpha inverted mat for the tongue. So you can just uh, turn off that solid. You can see if I move the tongue around, it'll appear where the solid object isn't because it's alpha inverted. It's using the alpha from the layer above it, um, only it's using what isn't opaque. So uh, let's set down some uh, puppet pins with our puppet pin tool. And uh, I'm just going to try to keep them in some kind of order that makes sense to me. Now I'm placing the puppet pins at places that will be stressed, places that will be bent. Um, so basically upper leg, knee, um, foot, and foot tip. Um, these are the areas that are going to bend, so I need the most control over them. So that's why I'm putting the little points down there. And so I'm just going to kind of continue on upwards here with the neck, shoulder, elbow, uh, wrist, wrist tip. And I'm going to do the same thing, trying to keep the same amount of puppet points for each layer, um, just because it'll make naming things easier and also keeping track of everything easier. It also helps if we do things in order. So, oh, we go shoulder, elbow, wrist. Okay, so here you can see we have a bunch of puppet pins. Uh, might be a good time now to use a starch. And I'm going to put that where I don't want things to bend because we want the... Uh, the upper arm and the forearm to be stiff. We don't want them to kind of uh, bend around like a wet noodle, which uh, the puppet tool often does. I mean, that does it does it very well, but we don't necessarily want that. And uh, yeah, I'll maybe do uh, some for the head. Um, perfect. Okay, so I think we're just about uh, ready once we get these legs. And so now comes the kind of laborious part where we're gonna have to name all of our puppet pins. And this is going to be important because we're also going to make corresponding nulls and we don't want to get confused. So I'm just going to start down here, start pelvis, and then I'm going to go, uh, let's see, uh, upper R leg, um, and so on. So I'll just skip over this part because there's nothing really special to my naming convention. Um, I'm just going to want to kind of follow loosely for the up other side. So if I name something uh up our leg for one leg. I'm just going to call it up uh, L leg for the other leg. And yep, so I'll just skip past this. Okay, yep, so I have a bunch of named puppet pin points, which you can actually go ahead and animate. You can move them around. Um, the thing I find with puppet pin uh, points is that they're hard to control because you can't really parent them together. You can't, like, say, grab a whole bunch of them and rotate them. Um, say if I wanted to move this up here, keeping the exact same shape is going to be very difficult. Um, but all that's kind of solved if we basically parent those puppet pins to nulls and then make one controller move all those nulls. So they kind of keep their uh, the spacing in between them the same. So I'm going to create a new null. I'm going to kind of line them up with where the puppet pins were. Um, unfortunately, they don't really show up. There is an expression that actually converts... Um, like a script that you can buy that will convert puppet pins to nulls, but I don't have that. So I'm just going to actually go in. I'm going to name them pelvis. Uh, I'm going to try to name them exactly the same things that I named the puppet pins because that's going to make the expression stage easier. That's where we actually parent the pins to the nulls. So here I'm just going to uh, go through and just make one null for every puppet pin that we want to control, which is pretty much all of them. So I'll skip past this part. Um, it's basically just me making nulls and putting them roughly in the area where those puppet pins we made were. 
kind of a laborious process, um, but it's worth it if you're going to be reusing the rig. So basically, we need to add an expression to the puppet pins. I think I found this on Creative Cow. What it does is basically if you twirl down um, the puppet pin effects and then mesh, you'll find all your, your uh, keyframe information for each puppet pin. So if you right click on the stopwatch, you can add in the expression. You're just going to want to paste it in there and then click and drag and scroll to the top where it says insert null name. Um, so I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to basically type in the exact name of the puppet pin because I tried to name the nulls the same as the puppet pin. So that's going to really help me out uh, in this process. And here you can see if I grab that null, the null is actually moving the puppet pin. Uh, so pretty cool. I'm just going to go through and I'm going to um, make sure that the, the names of the nulls are exactly the na same names as the puppet pins because again, um, rather than me like look up to the top and see what the names are, I'm just going to kind of rely on what the name of the puppet pin itself is is called. Uh, so let's twirl down this. Same process, you right click on the stopwatch. That opens up the expressions editor. You can basically paste in that expression. And I'm going to put that in the description field because it's a useful uh, expression. And I'm just going to type in the name of the pin itself and there it goes. If I uh, move around that uh, that null, or um, if I move around anything else, if the null stays in uh, place, the puppet pin will stay exactly where that null is. So I'm just going to go through and add an expression for every single puppet pin. So here we go. Okay, great. So I have a bunch of puppet pins parented to nulls. That's cool. I guess I can move them around like mm. okay so why is this useful well I'll show you first I'm gonna make a new solid object doesn't matter what color it is um, I'm just gonna make it a little bit transparent so I can see what's happening underneath and use the uh, bezier brush to kind of create a shape so that's our controller shape I'm just gonna make it around the area that I want to control so I'm gonna call this pelvis controller and it's gonna control those three points that are in that area I'm going to make it a guide layer so that it doesn't actually render out. When you see that little icon, it means it doesn't actually render out. So then I just need to go into my list of nulls, and I'm going to find the pelvis. Yep, I'm just going to pick up that up there. And there, now it's parented. And I'm going to do the same thing for the upper legs. Let's parent both those up there. So now, when I move around this controller, let's just get the... Uh, there we go. It's moving three points rather than one. Um, so that's really useful uh, in that I can rotate that point. Uh, I'm going to make another one for the torso now. So let's just go ahead and do the exact same steps. I'm just going to opacity down and draw a rough shape around the area that I want to control. This is mostly just a visual reminder um, and also just kind of like a handle that I can just grab. And this is our torso controller. Same thing, I'm going to parent the uh, neck, which is at the very top of the... Uh, of the, oh, it looks like it distorted a little bit. I'll show you. Sometimes moving the anchor point helps with that. So um, we'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. But uh, let's just grab the shoulder and the torso. There we go. All right. So now uh, I've got this controller that uh, I can play around with. I'm going to make one more controller for the head. Uh, and the reason why I'm changing the color on these things is just so that I have a, a good visual representation um, make these guide layers really quick. I have a, a good visual representation um, that's quick and easy for me to see like, oh, okay, yellow's the head, uh, green's the torso. Because um, otherwise you could see how they would blend together if they were the same color. So same process, just gonna parent those nulls there. And the, now I can parent the head to the torso, to the pelvis, as far as the controllers are concerned. If I move one, it's gonna move everything. Now the reason the arms aren't moving, and of course the tongue isn't moving, is because I don't have those parented yet. But since they're nulls, I can parent them. Puppet pins, you can't really parent. So now I've parented the arm nulls to the master torso controller, and uh, there I'm just going to move the anchor point of that torso controller up, and it seems to fix the deformation for some reason. Go figure. But now if I rotate the uh, torso, that solid is going to rotate around the anchor point. Uh, let's move the head one too. So um, just take the anchor point, move it right to where the neck would be. And now that's giving us a little bit better deformation. 
Um, so I could do the same thing for the feet. Um, you could do pretty much any kind of control you want. Uh, if you look back at our other template, something that's useful is a ground plane. Um, because if I'm animating a walk cycle or something, even if I'm comping in 3D space, it's kind of important that they're walking along the same plane so that when I put them as cards in a 3D environment, they don't look like they're floating up or down or, you know, they look like they're grounded. So again, you just move it like that. It's like, okay, well, that's where the ground is. There, I have one more cool thing to show you, um, and that's how I did the mouth on this big boo. Well, maybe it's a small boo. You can't really tell. It scales everything, right? Um, so I'm going to show you something uh, kind of cool with the way this guy's rigged up. Um, I have down here a mouth layer, and uh, if I move that around, you can see it kind of reveals the teeth and the tongue underneath. Um, so that's pretty cool. I'll show you how I did that. Basically, I'm going to turn off on the teeth and tongue layer the alpha mat. Um, so you can see I basically drew a bigger tongue and teeth than I would need. And uh, this layer here is the mouth mat. What it is, is it's basically the exact same shape as the mouth layer, but without the black outline. That's because where the red is is where I want to reveal the teeth. And I parented that mouth mat down into the mouth layer. So if I move the mouth layer around, the mouth mat is going to follow along with it. And we're going to use that mat to reveal the teeth and the tongue. So here's our tongue layer. And uh, what we're going to do with that tongue layer is I'm going to turn it to alpha mat. And uh, so that's going to look at the alpha information of the mat layer above. Remember, it's that, that red bit. Um, and it's going to look at that, and it's going to reveal the tongue layer where that mat layer is present. So it's kind of cool. I can uh, move the tongue around, and it's only revealed inside the area of the mouth. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the teeth. So I'm just going to make the teeth use the alpha mat um, from the layer above it, which again is our mouth mat. Uh, and there we go. So they're just going to be poking through wherever that mouth mat is. So I can take the original mouth layer, move it around, and I can kind of scale it up and make them talk and do whatever I want. So, uh, hey, <laughs> that's exactly what I want to do right now. So, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, thanks for voting. When we reach 536, I'm going to do another tutorial. If you have any uh, questions or comments about this one, leave them down in the comments field below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Or if you have any suggestions on what you want to see tutorial on. Thanks so much, guys. Take care.